clear a space in the garage and get me a headstand set up. All right, welcome back to the garage. It's after lunch, I've got car parts. Um, so, here we go. There's the head on the bench. There is a box of parts. Head gasket set, not a posh one, but you know, there wasn't a posh one. It was that or a load of other names I've never heard of. Um, cam belt kit, hopefully the right one. Water pump. Set of bolts. Some new coolant. And a whole set of valves. Now I've got a whole set, because I don't know how many are bent, and it's way easier to get them when they're on the shelf than it is to go and get another one when they shut at four o'clock. So the whole lot of there, everything that you see there, came to a grand total of 261 pound. Um, the valves were, sort of, we'll call it a tenner or so each. So you know, if I've only found one that's bent, and I'm gonna take them all out and double check, but there is every chance that I'm only gonna need one, and I'm gonna be taking 70 quids with the valves back. So 190 quid to pull the head off, change the valve, and put it back together in. So it's still not bad, is it? It's not bad, and you can't really complain. Right, I'm gonna put this on time-lapse, take all the valves out, and then we'll inspect them together. What you see before you is a bit of history. They don't really make these anymore. This is a bench grinder. The drill chuck in there. Right, if I spin this over. So if I put a valve in there and spin it round, I'm gonna know whether it's wobbly or not. So yeah, let's go. I'm just gonna spin this quickly and you'll see what I'm looking at. There is our bent valve. I've just checked numbers um, one and two, or are they four and three? Depends which way you want to look at it. I've checked the end two and they seem okay. I'm going to double check them once I've cleaned them up. But this one, yeah, that's very definitely bent. Um, none of the exhausts look like they'd had any kind of um, damage to them at all, but I'm going to check them just to make sure. But yeah, you get the gist. Um, time lapse. I'm going to cover this uh, on here. I've done it once before, I'm sure I have, but I'll cover it again anyway. Um, this is the valve, an exhaust valve that's come out of the engine. And I'm going to need to lap it in at some point, so I've got my old lapping stick. If I try and stick it on there, it doesn't want to stick because the uh, carbon deposits um, clog everything up a little bit. So this is how I go around cleaning up the um, valves, ready to be... Uh, lapped in. There's many ways you can do it, many ways to skin a cat. This is just my method. So I've got a bit of uh, 80 grit, oh, can you see it there? A bit of 80 grit paper. The valve is just lightly gripped in the truck. Spin it round and clean it up. Give it a buzz with 80 to get the heavy deposits off. Around all the edges. Go. and then I've got a bit of 180 to just polish the top root. Give it a wipe over. Got to say, that valve does look a lot more bent now it's clean. Yeah, we'll, we'll double check that. But having cleaned it up, got a nice shiny surface here. The uh, plunger will now stick to the valve so you can lap it. Onwards, I'm gonna do the rest of them now.
Okay, you've know, just seen me um, tidy this up. Um, it's not looking too bad. There's a few sooty deposits. I have been driving it fairly gently just with the petrol prices at the moment, just trying to keep the uh, cost of running down. But that obviously leads to a, a soot build up. Yeah, it's being driven gently. But I mean, you know, for what are we on now? 200 and something thousand miles from what I believe is the original head. I've got no, no guide wear at all. These the heads are just designed and built so well. You can see there's plenty of scope for um, increased gas flow if you were to try and pull it out, but that's not what I'm doing. Literally all you saw me doing with the drill was just cleaning all the soot off and around the chambers and around the, uh, the valve seats so that it's uh, good for me to lap the valves in. So um, yeah, we'll go with that now. Okay, you may well have seen I've done quite a bit of uh, fiddling around there. So what's happened, I've discovered upon lapping the valves that this one isn't, wasn't seating, that one wasn't seating. So in addition to the bent one here, two more valves just weren't seating right. I just couldn't seem to clean up all the way, all the carbon all the way around the exhaust. It would do about half moon shape and then the other half was just all the original set here. Yeah. I couldn't see it, but I'm going to assume that was bent. And it's the same with this one. This one, I think, may well not have been bent. It was just not a very well-fitting valve. Um, so whatever happened, I couldn't clean up the um, surface that it sits on. You can see now it's actually scored up quite nicely. Um, yeah, there was just such a tiny surface area that was um, contacting on that. So I just thought, well, you know what, I've got the valves here. So it's an extra 20 quid. It's not the end of the world, is it? Um, so yeah, one valve definitely bent, one I suspect fractionally bent, and one just not sealing right. But that's the coarse paste done, I'll do a once over with fine paste, and it's time to put the head back together. Well, obviously cleaning it first. Okay, there we are. Valve seats have been lapped back in, and they're as good as I can be bothered to make them. They'll sort themselves out on the car. There we go. Just noticing a little bit of. I need to give this one another go. It's hard to sort of see. There's just a dark patch if I get a uh, bit of light in there at the very top of that one there just doesn't look quite right so I'll give that another go of course and then we're fine and we'll see where we're at but um, let's just clean everything up assemble it back together and um, start putting it back on the car right. okay we are I've cleaned the head up um, oh, show you the underside. Oh, nice, clean and tidy. I've blown the ports out. There's nothing sitting in the uh, guides, and I have put the new seals on the top. So another time lapse. Let's get the valves back in the head.
Job done. Ha ha. So um, that's the uh, head back together. I'm going to pull this end pulley off to um, replace the ceiling here because it's a bit of a pig to do it otherwise. And um, yeah, then it's time to get it back in the car. I hope. Onwards. Place. Okay. Let's get this bad boy back together. Oi. Right, I appear to have got a little carried away with myself. I've uh, slid the old cam belt back on. I'm not going to do massive miles with it, but I don't want to go changing it if there's going to be a horrible knacker 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 bang sound. So old one's just been slid back on, engine's been spun over a few times. We've still got to do the tappet clearances, but there's nothing that's horrendously big or horrendously tight. Spark plugs are back in. The hardest thing I think to get to is back here. There's a 10 mil bolt at the bottom of this water pipe. So this is the aluminium block 1400. Um, then you've got from the back of the water pump, you've got this rubber pipe joined into a plastic, can be a metal one on some other early cars. Comes around the corner here and it's fixed in underneath there the 10 mil that's inaccessible to man and machine. Um, it's a bit of a peak to get to, but you know, if you fiddle around with it, you can get it. And then you've got the rest of them. It, it bolts onto here. Clamp the power steering pipes back in place, plugged in what I can plug in. And these also manifolds on. Um, I'm running out of daylight and I'm just tired, so yeah, that's where we're up to. It's dark, it's late, it's buttoned back together, but you can't really see. Okay, light is on. Hopefully there's not a bang. We'll see what happens. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> Champion. You heard it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Right. Giving it a test drive. I am now on my way to work and it's Monday afternoon. And um, I've just dropped the parts I didn't need back at Euro Car Parts. I've taken an executive decision. I put a good quality cam belt on the car, it's got gates built on it, and it hadn't failed. It's well within its lifespan, and I was quite gentle with getting it on and off. So I'm going to stick with the original. Same with the water pump. I did that at 140,000 miles. Now, we are at, come on car, 208,000. So it's done, whoa, 70, is that done 140, so it's 60, 70,000 miles. It gets 100,000 mile part, well within the spec, and I put on a good quality um, metal impeller part. I'm not worried about that. So, I took back the, uh, the valves I didn't need, water pump, everything else, um, and a big bottle of coolant, because I still had some in the garage, I just didn't think I had enough. Turns out I did. Um, so yeah, it, it turns out I had uh, £160 coming back. So that was a £100 fix. £100, the three bent valves, and a new head gasket. You know what? That's why I love this car as a daily driver. Because even when something drastic goes wrong, it's really not the end of the world financially. I know I am taking a gamble with the uh, cam belt and the um, water pump, 
but I've got Gates one on there and the other one was, I, I didn't know the name, never heard of it before, didn't know what the quality was like, so I'm working with another unknown. Oh well, the belt was in good condition, so screw it. I'll take my chances. But yeah, I've done a good, good thrash, good road test, not using oil, not using water. And um, we are job jobbed on the way to work. So uh, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, please um, like and subscribe. And um, I will see you on the next one when hopefully I get back to being able to do some more stuff on the Mini.